Dahil unti-unti na nating nakikita ang liwanag at katotohanan, asahan natin na lalo pang titindi ang pag sa ating institusyon, subalit hindi tayo matitinag. Hindi tayo papayag na muling bumalik ang panahon ng kadiliman at kasamaan. Our esteemed colleagues, the Honorable Speaker, Ferdinand Martin G. Romualdez, will address the body. Thank you. Please, please take your seats. Welcome back. Esteemed Deputy Speakers, Honorable Majority Leader, Minority Leader, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good afternoon, and welcome to the assumption of our regular session. I am pleased to see all of you back here in the halls of Congress, united and ready to serve our nation with renewed purpose and unbreakable resolve. First and foremost, in accordance with Proclamation Number 728, issued by President Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr., declaring November 4th, 2024, as a day of national mourning, we come together as a nation to honor the more than 100 lives lost in the wake of severe storm Christine. We mourn with their families, loved ones, and communities who bear the weight of this tragic loss. And we share in this moment of profound grief let us find the strength in our unity and offer comfort and support to those who have lost so much. May our heartfelt prayers and unwavering solidarity serve as a source of hope and healing in this time of immense sorrow. I extend my heartfelt gratitude and congratulations to each and every one of you in the face of Typhoon Christine a calamity that swept through communities, destroyed hope, homes, and disrupted lives. Many of you did not hesitate to set aside what should have been a period of rest. You mobilized, responded, and reached out to those in need, showing our countrymen what it truly means to serve. Our recent break intended for restoration and recuperation became a period of relentless work. Despite the demands and sacrifices it entailed, you showed unwavering dedication. You prioritized the welfare of our people, balancing legislative responsibilities with relief efforts that spanned our nation. I commend each of you for this selfless commitment to our mission and to the people we serve. You are a credit to this institution and I am immensely proud to stand with you today. Maraming salamat sa maagap ninyong pagkilos. Saludo po ako sa malasakit na ipinakita ninyo sa ating mga kababayan. As we reconvene for another legislative cycle of lawmaking, a task we have committed to undertake with urgency and passion we are once again expected to provide effective solutions to the most challenging and complex problems facing our nation. Given this immense responsibility, we must embody analytical thinking, practical sensibility, and fervent enthusiasm to carry out our roles as lawmakers. Our track record speaks for itself, and with confidence I can say that the 19th Congress has consistently delivered successful results and exceed the expectations. As we approach the end of this remarkable term, we have demonstrated to the nation that no goals are not achievable and no aspirations are unattainable. As long as we work cohesively and stand united, while Congress was in recess, President Marcos Jr. signed several laws identified as top priority measures 
by the Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council, the LEDAC. With the passage of RA number 12022, or the Anti-Agriculture Economic Sabotage Act, we are taking significant steps to protect our farmers from unscrupulous traders who exploit agricultural smuggling, profiteering, and hoarding. This new law will make food more affordable and accessible and provide better income for local farmers. Republic Act 12028, the Academic Recovery and Accessible Learning Adult Program Act, focuses on enhancing students' competencies in essential learning areas to ensure the quality of their education. We also welcome the signing of RA 12024, the Self-Reliant Defense Posture Revitalization Act, which aims to strengthen the country's de defense sector by boosting domestic production of defense equipment. This law will address short, medium, and long-term needs for the defense equipment in the country. To ensure fair tax compliance, the passage of RA 12023, the Value Added Tax on Digital Services Law, establishes a level playing field for both local businesses and international digital service providers in the digital economy. As we diligently work towards the conclusion of the 19th Congress, the House of Representatives has been instrumental in the enactment of 24 laws identified as priority member me measures under the LEDAC's Common Legislative Agenda for the 19th Congress. For the 28 House representative priority measures targeted for passage by the end of the 19th Congress, only two remain pending with the committee amendments to the Agrarian Reform Law and the Foreign Investors Long-Term Lease Act. 26 measures have either been enacted into law or approved on third reading. As of October 31, 2024, 61 national laws and 62 local laws were enacted. 19 measures await the President's action, five conference committee reports were ratified, and 765 House bills, both national and local, were approved on third reading and are now pending Senate action. Our legislative agenda in the coming days will build upon the targets identified during our last session. We await the signing by the President of Ladakh priority bills for the 19th Congress, including the Create More Act, Philippine Maritime Zones Act, Enterprise-Based Education and Training, the EBIT Act, and the Philippine Archipelagic Sea Lanes Act. As the head of the Philippine delegation to the recent 149th Interparliamentary Union Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland, from October 12 to 18, 2024, we highlighted the crucial role of science, technology, and innovation in achieving sustainable development goals and fostering future peace. These are the primary drivers of transformation toward a prosperous, inclusive, an environmentally sustainable economy. The world is undergoing a digital revolution and to maximize its benefits while mitigating its challenges, we must equip our nation with a comprehensive legislative arsenal. During the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN Business Investment Summit held in Vientiane, Dao People's Democratic Republic from October 6 to the 11th, 2024, we fully supported President Marcos Jr.'s assertion that the Philippines is an optimal investment destination. We commend President Marcos Jr. and his administration for their approach to reducing poverty and addressing food insecurity, leading to a notable reduction in self-rated hunger. The government reforms and programs are now yielding positive results. According to the August 28 to September 2, 2024, Tugon ng Masa survey published by Okta Research, self-rated poverty dropped by five percentage points with an estimated 1.4 million Filipinos now considering themselves not poor. Self-rated hunger also declined from 16% to 11%. 
meaning approximately 1.4 million families no longer experience hunger. <clears throat> it is also noteworthy that while we have achieved stability and maintained peace and order without compromising due process or the fundamental human rights of any Filipino, there has been a significant reduction in crime across various categories. According to the Philippine National Police, from July 2022 to July 2024, there was a 61.87% decline in index crimes compared to the same period from 2016 to 2018, with 83,059 incidents recorded against 217,830 in the earlier period. The PNP also <laughs> drugs worth 35.6 billion pesos and arrested 120. 2,309 individuals involved in drug-related offenses. Sustaining our economic recovery requires collaboration between the private sector, government, and academia. We must ensure that the Marcos administration's vision of a more equitable and prosperous Philippines becomes a reality. Through consistent efforts, we can further reduce poverty and provide more opportunities for our people to thrive on the last day of our session in September, the House adopted House Resolution 2036, allowing five committees to conduct a joint inquiry and proposed legislation to counteract massive smuggling and price manipulation of essential goods. This Quinta Committee comprises the committees of Ways and Means, Trade and Industry, Agriculture and Food, Social Services, the Special Committee on Food Security, aims to mitigate hunger and ensure food security. Despite our efforts, many Filipinos still face food insecurity. And according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the Philippines ranks first in food insecurity in Southeast Asia, with around 51 million Filipinos experiencing moderate to severe food insecurity. This highlights the urgent need for comprehensive action. This year, our nation has endured the impacts of both El Nino and extensive flooding, causing severe damage to the agricultural sector and affecting countless livelihoods. In response and under the President's directive, the 2025 national government budget will prioritize a strategic shift from traditional flood control to comprehensive water management initiatives, including water impounding systems to harvest rainwater, mitigate flooding, and ensure water availability during the dry season. These projects aim to create a more resilient and sustainable future for our communities. Additionally, in empathy with the plight of our less privileged countrymen, we introduced amendments to the 2025 General Appropriations Bill, earmarking $293.23 billion to enhance social services, strengthen social safety nets, and ensure food security. This is in addition to the $591.8 billion allocated by the Department of Budget and Management for cash assistance to indigent families. The enhanced budget will support programs such as assistance to individuals in crisis situations, AX, the Ayuda Sakapos Angkita Program, ACAP, the Sustainable Livelihood Program, Tulong Panghana Buhay, sa ating mga disadvantaged displaced workers, Tupad, the Government Internship Program, Tertiary Education Subsidy, and Tulong Dunong Programs, among others. To address the continuing issue of safe and accessible shelters during calamities, the House of Representatives filed and deliberated on House Bill Number 7354. Subsequently, in September, we adopted Senate Bill Number 2451, or the Ligtas Pinoy Centers Act, as an amendment to the House Bill, and we await the enrolled copy from the Senate for signing. 
This legislative measure is essential for protecting communities during disasters by establishing and maintaining safe, fully equipped, and permanent evacuation centers in every city and municipality. In continued support of the Marcos administration's initiatives, the House of Representatives has adeptly navigated its way towards fulfilling its goals. Beyond crafting laws and in our quest to provide effective legislation, we established the House Quad Committee to conduct joint public hearings on critical issues, including extrajudicial killings, illegal drugs, Philippine offshore gaming operators, POGOs, alleged irregularities in the procurement processes and unlawful contracts, as well as the illegal tactics employed by foreign nationals in our country. I would like to highlight the monumental work of the Quad Committee, a collective effort led by some of the brightest and most dedicated members of this House, including the Young Guns and others who have dedicated their time, energy, and conviction to this cause. The Quad Committee represents not just a legislative effort, but embodies our shared commitment to truth, justice, and accountability through their outstanding ability to elicit truth from even the most reticent witnesses and sources, combined with significant information gathered from confidential channels, the Quad Committee members have demonstrated the burning resolve to identify and remedy deficiencies in our laws. The Quad Committee's hearings have heightened public awareness, fostering a deepened commitment to transparency and accountability. We welcome the recent submission of pertinent documents and a partial report to the Office of the Solicitor General to investigate Chinese nationals who have fraudulently obtained Philippine citizenship to illegally acquire land and operate businesses in the Philippines. The report recommends the initiating of civil forfeiture proceedings against these individuals. In response to the Quad Committee's findings on extrajudicial killings allegedly committed by the state authorities during the previous administration's war on drugs, and the involvement of illegal POGO operations in human trafficking and money laundering, our Quad Committee leaders have filed House Bill Number 10986 for the Anti-Extrajudicial Killing Act and House Bill 10987 for the Anti-Offshore Gaming Operations Act. The Anti-Extrajudicial Killing Act explicitly classifies extrajudicial killing as a heinous crime ensuring that anyone, regardless of rank or position, found guilty of such acts faces appropriate criminal penalties. The Anti-Offshore Gaming Operations Act, on the other hand, aims for a total ban on all forms of offshore gaming operations in the country with penalties for violations. These legislative measures address long-standing issues that have been condoned or even encouraged by certain individuals and they will lead to legal actions against those involved. But let us not be naive to the reality we face. Those who seek to hide, those who seek to hide the truth will always resist, and our efforts are not immune to attack. The Quad Committee and our young guns have become the target of those who prefer the shadows over the light. They attempt to undermine our work casting aspersions and spreading false narratives discredit our pursuit of accountability. Yet, as we stand here today, we reaffirm our commitment to this duty. We are here to do the work without fear or favor, on a mission to uncover the truth. No matter how uncomfortable it may be for some, we understand that this journey will not be easy and that standing for what is right often means standing against the tide. But history has shown us time and again that no force can stand against the truth for long. Evil may cloak itself in power, influence, and wealth, but in the end, it is goodness that triumphs. Truth, though sometimes slow to reveal itself, will always, without fail, prevail. Sa mga nagtatangka, napigilan tayo sa paghanap ng katotohanan at katarungan 
E isa lamang ang sasabihin ko sa inyo. Hindi kayo magtatagumpay sa masamang hangarin ninyo. In this house of the people, we are on the right side of history. And make no mistake, no matter the challenges, no matter the opposition, we will stand our ground. We will not yield to intimidation or pressure. We will not be swayed by the attacks hurled against us. Instead, we will press on with even greater resolve knowing that people are behind us, that history will remember our courage, and that our efforts are guided by the principles of justice and integrity. Dahil unti-unti na natin nakikita ang liwanag at katotohanan, asahan natin na lalo pang titindi ang pag sa ating institusyon, subalit hindi tayo matitinag. Hindi tayo papayag na muling bumalik ang panahon ng kadiliman at kasamaan. To those who may question our motives, I say this. We are here for the people. We are here for the truth. And for the enduring ideals of this republic. Our work transcends personal ambition. It is about laying the foundation for a nation that is free, just, and governed by the rule of law. We are building a legacy that our children and grandchildren can look back on with pride. This fight for truth is not for the faint-hearted. It demands courage, perseverance, and unity. We must remember that the road to justice is often fraught with trials. The forces of darkness will not relent easily. They will use every means at their disposal to obscure the truth, sow doubt, and weaken our resolve. But as long as we hold fast to our principles and remain united in this purpose, we will prevail. As we resume our session, let us move forward with the spirit of resilience and dedication that has defined this house, especially during our recent response to the typhoon. Let us advance with a sense of duty, a commitment to service and dedication to people who have entrusted us with their hopes and aspirations. Today, as we stand on the right side of history, not just at witnesses, but as architects of change, the people are watching. History is watching. Let us not falter, for we hold the power to shape the destiny of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen of this chamber, we recognize that the House of Representatives cannot address every national issue alone. The Filipino people understand this as well. Nonetheless, as your humble steward, I urge each of you to make the most of our limited time before the 19th Congress adjourns and pass the most critical and urgent legislation. We were given this opportunity to serve the people with purpose, to uphold the principles of democracy, promote sustainable development, and as I emphasized in my closing statement last September, to build the Philippines where every citizen can live with dignity, opportunity, and hope. Esteemed colleagues, I call on you to cherish these remaining months of the 19th Congress, and together, let us bring it to a triumphant close. Tamong salamat, and may we move forward with courage, dignity, and unwavering faith in the triumph of truth above all. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas, at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend session for a few minutes.
So I should spend it 